All right, welcome back to another episode of Autoglass Tech Talk. We got Cody from Vancouver, Washington. So good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, so I'm still a youngin. I'm 24 uh, compared to you guys. You guys have been in the game longer and I've been alive. So, uh, yeah, I'm 24, live in Vancouver, which is uh, Vancouver, Washington, which is right by the border of Oregon, so like PDX Airport. Like right, I live like 10 minutes from the airport, so... And uh, yeah, I've uh, been doing glass for a little over three years, and I loved every day, honestly, besides dealing with crappy employers. <laughs> I started at Safe Flight, and then I left Safe Flight like after two years. So I've been out of Safe Flight actually now for two years. So. Hey, I have to, have to pause. <laughs> pause yeah, and hold on. Sorry, I got to step away for a second. Hello? Oh, are you okay? Oh, okay. Well, because it's calling you and calling you, you don't answer. So you can pause and stop the recording? No, just Corey. Corey okay. edits everything, so oh, he'll just kind of edit it out right there. <laughs> Cut it off. Corey's got a nice camera, though. I've seen some of the other podcasts. Yeah, he's got the best one. Yeah. The yeah. Lighting. I'm waiting for. Sorry! Up and then it'll be a little nicer. Right. Cynthia was Cynthia was MIA and then she finally called. So, sorry. <laughs> All right, no worries. Yeah. So where were we? Um, right by Oregon. Did you were did you were safe, safe flight, flight for a couple years? Safe so. for a couple years. Yeah. So I I was with Safe Flight for about two years, um, and then I've been outside of Safe Flight now actually for two years. So yeah, I've been doing glass for four years, not three. So a little over four years, because I started in 2016. Like right at the beginning of 2016 is when uh, I got my, my first glass job, and I was at Safe Flight. So uh, yeah, a little over four years. Um, mm -hmm. Ever since I left um, Safe Flight, I, that's when I realized the whole new world of glass, I guess you could say, because in the market that I'm in out here, they really condense you, you know, and they really only try to show you the Safe Flight way and no other way. But mm -hmm. Um, one good thing, I guess I could say one good positive thing about Safe Flight is when they teach you how to use wire tools, um, because uh, once the whole bat got popular and came out, I immediately picked it up, picked up the bat, and I'm, and I'm like, oh man, this is great, you know, and uh, it's good. So that's yeah, a, lot the only of, a lot of Safe Flight, a lot of Safe Flight guys like the bat because they say it's so similar to the Easy Wire, yeah, the dual spindle on it like that. Yeah. yeah crank. Everything, Everybody so. wants to. There, there's a lot of people who talk a lot of crap about the the safe flight when you first start and stuff. But you know, in, in all reality, it's it's a good way to to get some good training and to get some some you know good concepts of how to do everything. And like you know, like you you're there two years and now you're out somewhere else for two years and you learn a lot from there and now you you learn a lot lot more when you leave there. But you got a lot of you know good good skill set to advance with. You know. I I, I I always tell young guys that um, like Mike Stevens is actually was training his son-in-law, and I told him I go before you try to buy a truck and do this or that you should go work at Safe Flight or something with a really good you know the whole corporate structure and training you know before you try to go out there on your own you know um, at any level the 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 work you know it's like it's the scheduling and everything you know we talked to. Uh, Wyatt. Wyatt works at Safe Flight. Still, he's been there a long time, and he he's done everything in the whole company. So he's been through all the ropes, you know. But you learn all that. The the scheduling. You see how they schedule the jobs. You know. You know the time frames. Like you know how long it takes you to do the jobs and stuff. You know where you can get ahead. I mean, there there's a lot of stuff. I learned I learned a lot at Safe Flight. I mean, a lot of stuff that I took into working as a uh, my my own for myself. I because I worked at a couple shops between safe light and self-employment and you know you just take stuff from everywhere you learn yep. and now i implement a little bit here a little bit there into what i do now so you know you got to keep your head your mind open learning everything i had a question for you You said you're right on the border do you work into or uh down in the oregon or do you only stay in washington or how's that work so i i pretty much um so when i wake up 
uh, I leave here and then I go into Oregon, which is where the company's shop is. And then I go to Migrant or PGW or Pilkington, which is literally in Oregon, but like five minutes from the freeway to get into Washington. So it's called the 205 freeway. And there's a bridge across a huge Columbia River. And when you go over, you're in Washington. And when you go here, you're in Oregon. So here's the bridge. I live right here. So that works out. But I cross states every single day. So that's pretty much how that works. So technically, uh, Oregon has state tax and Washington does not. So I still get hit with Oregon state tax because I work in Oregon. But I, I still was live just going to ask you that. Yeah. So yeah. You get screwed on the taxes just because you're still working there right you work in another state though <laughs> yeah well and that and that's the thing too I, uh, I i have a good friend he owns his glass business here and he lives in washington but does the same exact thing i do and he says it's actually more beneficial like the way you guys do taxes obviously is different than the way i do taxes because i'm employed through an employer but you guys own your own gig so he says it's actually better on his end, you know, the, like the way you, you guys do it is better that way. But the way I do it, I get screwed because I get double tax. So, yeah, um, I mean, it, it is what it is, but both the punches. So it's what me and my girlfriend really liked over here. I mean, I grew up in Oregon, so it's pretty much my home. And we moved here. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot different, but it's home at the same time. Like, cause five minutes I drive, I go into home. So it's the same thing, just different color. <laughs> hmm. what it feels like. um, were you raised near the border there? Like, uh, in that area still, or were you, where, where did you grow up? Um, I, I grew up in Gresham and Troutdale, which is, um, like just little towns throughout Portland. Um, uh, Portland's like the, the biggest town pretty much where I'm at. And, yep. um, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I grew up down there. So it's about. Like from where I grew up to the bridge, it's like 20 minutes. So oh, wow. yes and no. So close, but a little further. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of uh, what what kind of work do you guys usually do um, at your job? You guys usually doing commercial, dealers, insurance work, body shops. Like what what's your daily jobs job uh, load like? Yeah. So. Uh, I've worked at three different companies now. The one that I'm with now is one of them. Um, at Safe Flight, we didn't really do, you know, any any body shop work out here for the most part. And then at my second company I worked with, um, we had like three dealerships that we worked for. So we did a lot there. And now at the shop I work with now, they um, they don't do much body work. We have a couple. Uh, like my bosses has a couple friends that own shops and they use us, but that's about it. Uh, we don't do any big main dealers. So we do a lot of insurance and client and uh, retail work. So just regular customers and insurance and that's about it. Okay. But here in the, in the Pacific Northwest, it's rainy, windy all the time, like throughout the whole year. So I wish I could work in a shop all day, but I'm mobile. I've been doing mobile for like, solo dolo for like three and a half years so first six months at safe light was under a wing and then they gave me the boot and said all right go figure it out <laughs> so 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 what's your setting tool buddy uh i post in the group about pro sets this is my setting tool right now but okay. um, scariest. my i'm i'm starting to get a little more um a little more question questionable about it because I don't feel any pain in my back or my arms or my shoulders yet, but I know it will come because all you all you guys say, trust me, do this, do that. I listen to you guys. I really do. It's not like I'm out there hand setting because I think I'm badass or something. You know, I actually think the quite opposite. I think hand setting is kind of lame if you think about it. Um, I've messed up some sets by hand sets. I'm sure you very rarely mess up sets with a pro set. So it goes hand to hand, but uh, right now I'm using my hands, man. <laughs> Yeah, nothing wrong with yeah, that. The, 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 day I, the day I bought my pro set is because I just fucked up a handset on an escape and I pulled <laughs> over the side of the road and bought it. I like, all right, fuck it. I give up. I was handsetting uh, Sprinter vans. I had, I, I got the uh, Solar City account and they just had tons of Sprinter vans and I was handsetting Sprinter vans with the hood propped up and 
it was killing me and I was like, all right, finally gave in, got a tool. And then from there, it just kind of like evolved into, you know, oh, this tool, this tool, uh, there's even more tools. So, you know, I've, I've used all of them and they all work. It don't matter what you use. Right. I feel like if, if you are going to bite the bullet and continue hand setting and not buy a setting tool, um, I feel like you should not listen to anybody on how to hand set. I think, naturally you should slap the cups on the window and try it on what feels comfortable for you because there's an old guy I used to work with at safe light he's like he watched me hand set a few times he's like no you got to do it this way and i tried doing it that way and it just was awful i'm like (laughs) i'm like what are you talking about you know it's not comfortable at all for myself and um once i went out on my own uh, they gave us the one tech which was cool i actually used the one tech a lot i really like that tool um but there's some cars especially in the pacific northwest when you try to set a window under a tent with rain coming in sideways, you know, it's kind of hard. So sometimes it's quicker just to slap the cup on and go. Um, but when it's not raining like that, I try to use a setting tool as much as possible. Um, so it, it's just all, all do your own, whatever you feel natural with doing, you know. At the end of the day, it's still bad on your back, but. Uh, What's your style? Are you a, like a door jam set, a fender set? Um. I've actually never set door jam. I don't, I don't know how to set door jam, nor do I care to learn. But um, I do, so I set from the driver's side. I do one, co- one cup on the window about like an arm length away or like a forearm length away. And then one cup like a little on the bottom before the center of the glass. So oh, you're a double cup on the one side. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I've um, I posted a few hand setting videos in there. Um, it's pretty much the same style all the way around. Um, but usually if I can't tuck my hand under the hood, uh, I just use one cup glove and that's it. But if I can't get my hand under it, like on some BMWs or the four escapes, I do two cups on those. Or, uh, if I, if I can get my hand under it, I just do one cup. So it helps. I like one cup personally. So, because I kind of use this hand, like on the edge of my, I put the glass like on the edge of my hand and that's my guide, you know, this right hand is just to lean it over. Yeah. So, um, I set opposite though, so I I the side that I set from I set that side of the glass first instead of the opposite side. Okay. Okay. So, well, I, I I do that when I hand set sometimes. So. Right. I hand set uh, try to hand set a, a window a month just to keep the muscle memory going, but you know, <laughs> fuck that. I'm getting too old for that shit. Yeah. I I learned it all. I I, I like setting from. Uh whatever honestly i i everything i set now normally is from the left side i i used to be from the driver's side um everything from the driver's side fender then i jumped into i seen someone hand set from the door jam and that was like so amazing so i, I hopped in the door jam on a car and, and did that one and then i i you know learned that jeff was left-handed and uh so i started hand setting from the fender on the left side then you know, left hand I, on the, in the actually door not. Kit. I'm not left handed. Not 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 mean left handed, but just like I said from the right side of the car. Set from the right side of the car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See that that's it's funny. Backwards. I'm kind of backwards like that too. Like when I'm running my bead, because I, I personally run bead on body. Um, when I'm running the bead, I actually like shooting uh, like using the glue with my left hand. Like when I'm shooting the body, like when you're going across the top with your left hand, I actually find that more comfortable than using my right hand. You see, so you sit in the, you go in the passenger side and go over. Yeah. Left hand. Okay. Yeah. But total, I have uh, like four seams on my beads. So I, I do half on one side, half on the other. I don't, I don't really like to reach all the way across and do well, you're not one long. To anyway, so. Yeah. I, I don't like doing that because. Gun like yeah. this instead of like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a firm believer in 90 degree on the gun, man. I go. hate people seeing it when they're shooting it like parallel with the body. I'm like, what are you doing? You're like <laughs> pretty much not even putting the glue on the, like on the bond line. The round like, at the bottom half. <laughs> yeah, I kind of stuff my gun on that bond line too. I really hold it tight up against it, you know? Well, that's so, your, you're supposed to. Yeah, a lot of people don't. You, you see a, oh, lot of, no. a lot of crazy work out here, man, in the PNW, especially with it raining. I mean, I've seen people install windows in the pouring rain with no tent, and I just like. What? It's like that meme with the green frog with the with the cup of tea. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> like, I don't want no part of that, dude. 
That's funny. That just showed your age that you didn't know it's Kermit's name. That's funny. <laughs> That's it. Kermit, okay. Kermit. <laughs> oh, I got I got I got kids older than you, Cody. So yeah, that's funny. yeah, that's good. I'm the youngest out of five boys. My mom's had five boys, so I'm the youngest. That's cool. Yeah, that's so cool. all my yeah. brothers are older. <laughs> I'm the I'm the oldest in my family. You're the youngest, aren't you, Chris? Me? No, I'm I'm the oldest. Oh, you're the oldest? I, yeah. Oh, I thought I thought your brother was older than you. No, that little midget, he's, no. Oh, <laughs> oh that's messed up. Wow. <laughs> he got the short side of the family. He knows it. Our oh, grandpa's wow. like maybe four and a half feet tall. He's like full Iranian. And uh, yeah, my brother got that whole Persian side. And he's like, yeah. You know, little <laughs> that's funny. Sorry, Dylan. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah. that's yeah, that, throwing, throwing jabs at someone who can't even defend themselves. It's all right. I'll send you the video later so he can see. <laughs> He'll join in on the next podcast. I heard you were yeah. saying something. <laughs> All right. Well, look, I got to – um. you want to bring something up. So you're talking to us, and you're saying about bad employers. Yeah. Is it bad employers or is it bad bosses? Yeah, bad, bad bosses. Bad, bad bosses. Bad so bosses bad leadership, team. bad management. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I kind of posted uh, in the group, uh, I posted a little text message thread through me and my boss. Oh, and, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm a very straightforward dude. Um, I give everyone respect. I don't care how old you are. I mean, you could be my old as my grandpa or as old as, you know, the kids in middle school. I don't care. Okay. So, I give respect to everyone. And I always give my boss respect. And when I just don't get it back, it's like... I. I don't care if you're just trying to do your job. Like I put out good work for them, you know? And, um, if, if someone makes a mistake, I feel like you should own up to it. That's why I personally, I like to go out to my, my own warranties. Okay. If I break it, I want to go fix it. I don't yeah. want anyone to touch it. So anyways, um, no, it, it's just, he talks to me sometimes in, in a way, uh, that's just kind of disrespectful. You know, uh, I know I'm young. Um, I, I do take honest criticism, but the way he does it is not honest criticism. He's like, I'm just trying to help you out, man. And it's like, but you're not. You're not helping me out. You know, he, and he's been doing it longer than I've been alive. But uh, I feel like he's just got some things going on because he used to own the company I worked for, but he sold it out to the new owner. That was my next question. Was Is he the owner still? or he's, So he's manager of the company he used to own now? Yeah. Wow. And the owner of the company, which is a very cool guy. I, I would work for him for a very long time. Very cool guy, right? Unfortunately, he has a lot of stuff to do, so he's not really in the picture all that much. However, when I do talk to him and I do address an issue to him, he's super cool about it. Like, super cool, you know? And when I go to my manager, I'm like, hey, this and this and this. And then he's like, oh, uh, I don't want to say the name, but the owner, he's like, He's like, oh, he's so angry, this and that. He's so mad. And then when I call him, he's like, oh, dude, no, I'm not mad at all. So this guy blows things out of proportion every day, you know. And when they're giving me six or seven installs in the rain, you know, it's like I don't need that stuff. Like, especially if I'm out there doing good work, making you money, you know, I don't I don't need that, that the office stress. You know what I mean? I don't work in the office. I, I install glass. <laughs> yeah. But he brings that stress on a lot. So that that's one thing. Yeah, so that okay. So going back to your uh, your text message thing, um, it was it was about a windshield, about the heated windshield, right? Yeah, on a on a thirty one eighty three Toyota Four Runner. Um, so I went out there. It was like three o'clock, and I was going into like deep downtown Portland, which is from migrant like during traffic, like forty five minute drive. So I drove there. It took me about twenty minutes to get there alone. I get there. And I noticed that the window in the car is heated. The one I have is not heated. And um, I get there and I'm talking to the customer and the customer clearly says, he's like, hey, so you have a heated window, right? And I'm like, and then I looked at it. I'm like, no, it's actually not. I have the wrong part, this and that. Um, and he's like, oh, okay, no problem. What do we do? So I called my boss and my boss didn't answer. Every time I try to call him, like in the midst of the moment, he's like, hey, just text me, which I understand that. So I'm like, okay. So I texted him. And that's when he texted me what he texted me in the text thread. He's like, 
you know, you probably went squealing to the customer, or this and that. And then he told me just to put in the glass. And I'm like, no, dude, like, that's not the, the cool thing to do. And then I was like, the customer specifically requested heated for one, for two, I'm not gonna put in the wrong glass. So that's just not the type of guy I am. Um, and he got kind of upset at me, you know, and I, I told him how I felt. And he's like, why are you so sensitive lately? And I was like, so when, since when is doing your job correctly being sensitive? Yeah. You know, I get, I get paid by piecework. Okay. So essentially, even if we had to reschedule that job, I'd lose the money that I'd make from doing that glass just to do it right. But to my boss, he's thinking like, Oh, well then you're also losing us money. And it's like, but you're not losing the money because if you put the uh, wrong part in and the customer complains, you have to redo it. Not saving them, saving them the, the headache in the yeah. long run. You know, that's, it's the smart thing. It's to called do. integrity. Like yeah, wrong that's, the, that's the integrity of it for sure. I'm the same way, Jeff's the same way. You know, I've rescheduled people all the time just because we got the wrong thing. I, just because there's a scratch, you know, that we see at the warehouse, and I'm like, it drives me nuts. Like, I'm, I'm, I can't put that in their car, you know. Like, uh, maybe a dealership or something who doesn't care. They're like, yeah, go ahead, give me the lower end, you know, something like that. But not like a retail customer who's paying full price, you know, and they're they're expecting that quality and everything. So, right. And, you know, I, I don't know, especially when the customer requested, Hey, I said, yes. I want to eat it. Cause he knows what he has. Yes. You know, the guy, it's not some old lady that don't care or don't know, you know, she's like, put it in, you know? Yeah. No. It was some young dude. He lived in downtown Portland and, and it was three o'clock at, at this time. Keep in mind. And it gets dark here at four fifteen, like oh, wow. where it's not really cool to install. And, in, you know, especially raining, like if it's, sunny out and then it gets dark i'm more than willing to work but if it's raining in the dark dude it's like come on yeah. it's like you want to throw in these windows just to make a quick buck to do that it's like dude that that's fucked up you know i'm not like that i want to do my job right because i don't want to have to go out to the customer twice for one for two i care about my work and i don't want to have to do it twice but he's like he's like he's like whatever man just go get a new one by the time i get to migrant it was already dark and I go back and I'm just like thinking to myself, like, holy crap, like, why am I doing this? You know, and it just it gets my gears rolling in my head. It's like, man, I just need to go on my own. You know, I'm sure it's not the easiest thing in the world, but I'd be happy doing what I love to do for myself. You know, I don't care yeah. what it takes. So there was a we had a situation where uh, it wasn't like an, entirely in that situation. Uh, Joe threw away a wire on an Audi. He left it attached to the rear view mirror area and um, it got tossed. Like it wasn't intentional, but it got tossed. And by the time we, it was the next day, we, we, we had to go back to put this whole thing together. It was at a dealership, had to order gel pad. It was like smashed right where the camera was. So we went back the next day to put everything together and uh, realized like, oh shit, we don't have this wire. So He's like, uh, you know, what do we do? He still had one more car to go, and it was already, you know, almost 4 o'clock. I think it was like 3.30 or something. I'm like, look, don't worry about that windshield. We're going to reschedule that shit. More importantly, go to my grant, see if you can try and dig that shit out the dumpster. <laughs> so he gets there, and the, the garbage was empty in the morning. Now it's completely full, pallets on it, everything. So they're like, he's still trying to dig in there and get it out and everything. Oh, yeah. And it just... It came to it of like, yeah, you know, we, we can't get it out. Like, you know, we tried, but look, dude, you know, shit happens. It's it's not your fault. You know, we went back the next day. Like, yeah, maybe next time be a little more conscious of when you're taking stuff apart. But shit happens, man. You know, you can't, no. you can't be like that. You just got to get it done, man. You got to get it done. Like, I need that. I need that windshield done. You know, it's just it doesn't work. So now let me ask you a question. OK, now in the future. Um, in the future when something comes up and you guys are pretty much what we like to call it, like play cards with each other, right? Would you ever throw that in his face later? Like uh, if something ever came up, would you ever feel the need to throw it in his face? Never at work because Joe, Joe is my cousin. So like I, it's, we're family and outside of work. I'll, I'll, I'll throw that out him all day, <laughs> all day. Like jokingly, right? Jokingly, right? What's that? Yes, like jokingly, joking, com completely jokingly. jokingly, like, we've already moved past it, you know, like, it's, this was the other day, and I'm already, you know, I was over it five minutes after it happened, like, right. you know, 
whatever. But yeah, jokingly, I will give him shit for it. But as business, no. He's he even offered to pay for half of the. Uh, we found one on eBay. It's like 120 bucks. So he even offered to pay for half of it. I'm like, no, you know, don't don't worry about it. You know, it's just. See, and, and and here's the thing with that about the whole paying for your warranties, which which I feel like is kind of a touchy subject. Like yes and no about it, but like. Um, I remember I was working for this guy and not for this guy, the guy I currently work for now. And, um, that I had like two warranties in like four months. Okay. One was breaking one of the little cow side pieces on a Subaru Forester, I think it was, or an Outback one of the two. And I had a couple in my van because I bought some from migrant because they sell them there here. So I had a couple and I put it on there. Okay. But, uh, I told my boss about it. I said, Hey, I broke this, but I put a new piece on there because I had one in my van. He's like, okay, cool. And then my next warranty, a couple months down the road. Um, and that's not even a warranty because they no, can bill for it. that. They can bill it, insurance it, for it. You can bill for it. They break all the time. They, that's not even a warranty. Them off. That's why Migrant sells them. You know, it's it, Migrant and these aftermarket companies wouldn't make that part if it wasn't a uh, consumable. Right, right exactly. And, and that's what I'm saying. He brought that up and a little disagreement that we had. And he's like, oh, you broke this and that, this and that. And then every little teeny warranty that I had down the road, which not even a warranty, stupid stuff that you can fix, okay, with, without having to buy parts. And I'm doing it the right way as well. And he would bring that stuff up. And every little thing that would go wrong, quote unquote, he'd make me pay for. It. And I'm like, okay, fine, cool. And I give him the money. I told him, take it out of my check, right? I even offered to take it out of my check. And then after I pay for it, he still throws that stuff in my face oh, and no. uses it, use it against me in an argument. I'm like, look, dude, you, you can't how bring that up. Is this, how old is this guy? He's I, late 40s, early 50s. That's He's childish, Yo, immature. That, that's ridiculous. Yeah. First off, don't pay for your warranties, okay? That's what business insurance is for. As much as I would hate to have to fucking drop, you know, a 250 or $500 deductible, I've done it myself. I fucking I dropped my pro set taking it off of a car, like taking it off the windshield. I fumbled and tripped over something and it fell out and smacked the door and dented it and chipped it. So, you know, that I had to pay for that. But, you know, it's yeah. like uh, if if the same thing happened to Joe, I'm not going to be like, "Yeah, bro, you got to cough up that deductible." Like, you know, we're, you know, no. No, that's that's what the insurance is for. That's why we pay for it every month. You know, it's you don't ask your employees to pay for stuff like that, you know, right. like and I mean, we're we're going through a situation right now. So I, I went to do a back glass on a Camaro, a newer Camaro and um, job went fine. Customer was super nice. She was a super nice lady. She was working out in the garage when I was there doing the job. OK, then it started to sprinkle. So I popped my tent up over the Camaro. OK, I slid it over. I, she had a huge driveway, so there was more than enough room for my tent. I wasn't squeezing it in between cars, this and that. I threw the tent up over it. When I was done, I pulled it back, put it away. We went to go do payment and paperwork. And as soon as she walked out of her garage, she walked to her driver's side, rear fender. And she's like, oh, my God, what did you do? And, like, I kind of like, what? You know, because I was in my van putting away some tools. She's like, what did you do? And then I came back, and there's, like, a huge gouge, like, on her fender. Like, it looked super old, too, like, not fresh. And then she started wigging out on me, dude, like going crazy. Well, did you do a pre-inspection? Especially, that's especially that's doing a that. piece of tempered that's going to have scratches and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, I, yeah. I completely agree with you, Jeff. I did not do pre-inspections. So that's why my boss is upset. But I, however, I did send them the pictures of the quote unquote damage that I caused. It, clearly, I didn't do it. But that's, like, that's it, it don't matter. That doesn't matter. I mean, I, I look at – I'm all for a boss treating you with respect and talking all that. And the way he's not talking to you like a man is stupid and irresponsible yeah. and, and disrespectful. <clears throat> but at the same time, you need to take your medicine when it's time to take your medicine. So that, no pre-inspection because yeah. I've had I, it I've happened to me too. The pre-inspection, yeah. you definitely – should be doing that, especially when you know you have a boss like that and someone who will pick on you know any little thing right. not even something like to turn in for him like print out a, you, you can get the dow ones uh off the dow website or one of the reps even if you get or, your phone and do a walk around video that's yes. time stamped with the where you every, show that 
and I always do that when I have a card that's really, really bad. I'll take a video, make sure I get the VIN number, and make sure you show that nothing's been taken off the car. It's still the broken yes. windshield in the car, all that. Halfway and go it. and go slow. Speak slowly and coherently because you may think you're talking right, but then you hear the video and you're like, blah, 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 blah. so um, I mean the video. <laughs> <laughs> more, more, more than pictures, more than than the pre-inspection, having them sign on it, a video in today's day and age, you know, yeah. everybody's got a, a you yeah. know, a nice phone now. That's so. Awesome. So where where I was going with that is, however, I do agree with you, Jeff. You're 100% right. I agree 100%. But my thing that is bothering me about it is, I sent the picture to my boss, and he completely agreed. He's like, "There's no way you did that. Whatever, blah blah blah." blah. He brushed it off his shoulder. So I'm like, okay, cool. But then this lady pursued with wanting to quote unquote sue us for the damage. Okay. Now my boss is freaking out at me and he's like, dude, I have to repaint this lady's car. And they quoted us like $4,200. That's what you're costing me. And I'm like, dude, I can't afford to give you $4,200. this insurance. Well, okay. Okay. And that's what you're saying with the insurance. And that's why I'm bust, I know he can pay insurance. Yeah. Well, he should have. Okay. One, he should have just ate it. He should have just been like, whatever, worked out something with you, made you pay the deductible or something or whatever. Because you technically, if I was the boss, I would come to you respectfully, explain everything to you, explain why you should be financially responsible for at least the deductible or something like that. But I also, when I had employees from the get go, everybody knew what protocol was. You know, if you had a warranty, if something was damaged, everybody knew from the get go. So it wasn't like springing something new onto him, you know, once something happened. Okay. So that's where he's a bad man. He's not a, he's not a good boss, period. Yeah. We, you know, th that being said, but he handling that situation, he should have just fixed it and been done with it. He's going to have to fix it anyway. So why fight it? If you just fix it, I mean, the customer would be happy might give you a good review still or something like that. It, not not even that. Not even like where it's just fix it and like you pay a deductible. It's, you know, I mean, it just, it, it depends how, how you are with your employees. You know, if, like you said, if he agreed with you at the beginning, you know, like if, if Joe called me and is like, bro, this lady's tripping, yo. She fucking is telling me I gouged her car. Like I, I you know, I wasn't even near that area, nothing. And, um, you know, and I, I, he sends me a video and I see it and I'm like, no, that's not you. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand my my ground and I'm gonna have your back to a point, you know, un, until it gets to like where she is wanting to sue or something, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna give in and whatever, pay the deductible and just have it handled, you know. I mean, especially if it's something that you know you did not do, you know. But that's where at the same time we're just saying have a conversation with you and be like, look, you know, this. You know, it, it's not like it costs us a lot. You know, it's we've had to pay our deductible, but the pre-inspection could have saved all of this. So, you know, from here on out, you just have to make sure that you're doing this. And even if you're not writing it down, take a video, take pictures, something. Let's just try not to have, you know, any of these situations happen again because it's so easily preventable. So, right, or even at that point, go look. This time we're gonna take care of it, but this happens again. Exactly. This is what's gonna have to happen. So yeah, like, way. I'm gonna cover this now, right. but you know, but now we had this conversation, and you know, you know, I know, we're all on the same page with it. If it happens again, and you know, something like that, then you know, you're probably gonna have to pay the deductible on that because, you know, it's. I mean, that, that's that's pretty fair. I'd, I'd say. I I agree. I think it is 100% fair, and I'm more than willing to pay that deductible. However, I know he has a deductible, but he's telling me he wants to pay the whole thing. So I think he's trying to pocket oh. some money. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the part that frustrates me. I'm like, look, man, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for not taking the pre-inspections. Let me pay the deductible. But he didn't tell me about any deductible. He just said it's going to cost me this much money to fix it. And I'm like, dude, well, he doesn't want to make a claim or he has some crazy. See, like some shop owners have crazy high deductibles, you know in the thousands of dollars which doesn't make any sense and they never want to make a claim you know like my deductible is 100 bucks i have a hundred dollar deductible oh fuck i wish i could get 100 they wouldn't offer me 100 but i got 250 and you yes. know we were 500 the first incident and i didn't know that and i when we did our when we did our insurance my wife set it up and neither of us knew actually that it was 500 but 
after that first payment, I was like, oh, hell no, you know, bring that down, up my monthly, I don't care, you know, like, I'm, there's no sense in not having a low deductible for your insurance like that, because mistakes happen, it's, you know. Especially if you're working on nice cars, you know what I mean, and this is. You work with glass, broken glass everywhere on a car, you know what I mean, like, I, I do a lot of body shop work, and there's a few shops that if they get a car in with a back glass broken, or a lift gate broken and they're uh, they're not doing a repair on the lift gate or something like that. I tell them like, hey, the the paint is scratched. There's damage to the paint. So I mean, I don't know if you want to talk to them or not, but there's still damage and I'm I'm not taking any liability for that. I'm just putting the glass in. That's on you guys. You're the body shop. You're doing it. But I let them know that there's still damage. You know, it doesn't matter what you do. They're tempered glass. You're gonna have damage on the car no matter what. Yeah. Yep. I, I, and it was like on the lower fender, like right above the wheel well, uh, not the wheel well, but like right above the tire. It was like, probably, I want to say like a good four inches. And it looked like it was intentional. Like somebody vandalized her car. That's what it looked like. And it was just so bad because then her husband, her husband's feathers got all riled up and he started getting loud. And I'm like, I'm out of here, dude. Like I, yeah. I literally, she went to give me payment and I bounced. I just, I gave her her debit card back and I bounced. I yeah. went and told my boss the situation, and he's like, oh, just get out of there, whatever, this and that. And then she, she called apologizing and this and that, and uh, she, she said she'd come and pay cash to my boss, and then she never came. But then she called, I guess, like a week later, threatening to sue for the scratch. So, What the hell? Yeah. So it, it's just bothersome, man. I, I just feel like as, as owning your own company and being a technician, like you should stand your ground, you know? Um, I feel like you you and your boss or your employer should be one. Like, you guys should be a team and help each other. You know, if you're making him money and he's giving you money, you know, you guys got to be a solid team. You can't just be treating your technicians like shit. No, like no, it, but it goes, it goes back cool. to the, what Jeff said, too. You know, like a, a good boss, you they got to have that conversation with you, you know, of if, if you're, you're not going to be on the same page if, if you don't, you know, but if you're on the same page, he's going to have that right. conversation. Uh, with a, you. a good boss, a good boss can put you in your place, make you feel <clears throat> like a, like a bad person, scold you, do all that respectfully. Yes. They can do all that to you and still treat you like a man and be respectful. Yeah. You know, you don't have to yell and belittle people and, and say no. stupid comments like you're in high school. I mean, you you, if you have a good gift, you can tell somebody there's a stupid motherfucker, and they'll walk away with a smile on her face. You know, it's all how you tell somebody. You know, and yeah. you know, it's some people got it and some people don't. That's just that's just the way it is. I'm just I I'm 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 over you know going to find someone else to work for. I'm going to do this. There's some things that fear me about going out solo. Uh, but there's so many more uh, positive things to to look at to make me want to learn it and do it. You know, like the work works not hard to me anymore. I, I can install. Okay, it's not an issue. It's yeah. it's the other little things that come along with what you two deal with every single day that are are in my my learning process. If, if that still makes sense. So yeah, I I'm sticking it out with this dude as in, in long as I can to just go do it. You know. The, the, so. the difference between employment and self-employment is when you're employed, you're earning money. But when you're self-employed, you have to make the money. And yeah. that's big difference. Big, yeah. big difference. And some guys figure it out real fast and some guys never figure it out and never go, you know what I mean? I know a lot of guys who tried and failed and just went back to employment and just said, screw it and done with it. So, yeah, you know. I mean I'm not going to know personally until I try it. So exactly. That, that's one thing that uh, is getting me over my fears. You know, it's like, who knows? It, it could be the best thing that ever happened to me or it could be the worst. But uh, I mean, I'm young. I got time. I might as well give it my all. You know what I mean? Do you have kids yet? So, I don't have kids. No. See, that's a good, good. Yeah. Take that chance. You know what I mean? Because when yeah. I did it, yeah. when I, I mean, geez, let me see. 2013, my kid was a uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> my my you guys oldest, are making me feel so, like I'm in diapers. Chill okay, out. so my oldest, <laughs> my, <Two. laughs> 2003, in 2003, my oldest was eight, eight. So my youngest was five. So I had an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. And when I 
said screw it and went out on my own. So I told you know, hey, there, there's, there's never a bad time. It's just the decisions you make is what determines your outcome. Right. And and what one good thing too is the group, man. There's you literally post something and literally like who who's ever adminning the group, they accept it right away. And literally within minutes, dude, you got five people in the comments ready to help you. Oh, like yeah. there's so many, so many things that help us younger guys out more with, I feel like, than when you guys had it. Like you guys were like the raw roots of the industry technically. You know what I mean? And we got it good here. So we need to take advantage of that and try to get it done. That's at least the mindset I'm on. So like, No, I mean there there you guys have so many more tools information wise actual hand tools i mean the technology right. everything's so much far advanced than it was you know right. you know right. years ago going back to learning from safe flight you know um just that alone being a being in the different years of that you know there there wasn't quite uh what is it the easy wire when you were there right uh, I, I started safe flight right when the easy wire came out jeff there was no at least the, right. the, there wasn't the even i two. i was a safe flight there wasn't even extractors when I was yeah, at Safe there Flight. Yeah, no extractors, yes. Like, so, we were literally using the gray 14-inch pipe knives to cut yep. bottoms out of windows. Little screw-in top piece. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, yeah. and the guys, the, when I was in my early 20s, the guys who were in their 40s and 30s then, a lot of those guys would tell you the wrong stuff on purpose. Whoa. Yeah. Where did Cody go? There you go. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, and I we were just talking to Chuck Hauser about that the other day about how he doesn't understand why how there were so many guys that would not want to help yeah, intentionally, intentionally screw off. people up intentionally. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so now now being the younger person, it's you have uh, access to to stuff to where your job is not um, not as hard, but uh, I guess not so much as labor intensive. Where you can you can do a lot more than we could before, you know, and yeah, right. See, my my thing is though is is when I was trained, uh, I learned uh, easy wire. Like my first day, my first day ever in the shop, uh, one of the guys he's he's been doing it for a very long time. Very smart guy, and uh, he literally just threw me the bag, the little bag that the easy wire comes in. And he said, figure it out. And at first I was like, all right, if this is how it's, how it's, how it's going to be, that's going to suck, you know. If I'm just... <laughs> and then I started, I got it set up. Like, I had no idea what I was doing. And he comes over. He's like, you're doing it right. I'm like, oh, no shit. And I just, I cut out my first window on my first day. And uh, nice. I think it was on, like, a, I think it was, like, a Ford Window 2011, too. It was an older Tacoma. Right. And uh, I cut that thing out with an easy wire. Pulled the cow. The cow was already pulled. I, I, I didn't do that part, but. He had me get in there and figure it out, and I did it. He's like, dude, that's cool. You actually did it. And then that was, like, the only window I cut out for, like, a whole month. <laughs> he was just teaching me how to do cows and rear view mirrors and all that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, dude, it, it, it was pretty cool. But once I got more experience, I immediately picked up the cold knife and the long knife just to get that under my belt, you know. I still use that about 40% of the cars I do. Uh, most cars are either bat or bat really yeah um if it's not bad it's cold knife long knife um sometimes i bring out the extractor but i very rarely touch that thing so yeah it's only on an occasion for me too yeah, yeah i hate it, using it, my extractor uh, 1099s 1099s i that's the only thing i touch <laughs> really extractor yeah i buzz those things out all day use long. a bat that's a dude have you ever installed the pnw <laughs> you got the good weather out there and the good juicy urethane, dude. He's got, got the... he's got some good rust out there. You'd be surprised. I bet. Hey, he's talking about frozen urethane, though. I have to say, I think that your rust might be a little worse. Uh, I, it definitely is. <laughs> definitely is. Trust me. If I can have that juicy, luscious urethane like you in 80-degree weather in the winter, dude, man, <laughs> I'd be in it to win it, dude. Hey, if you ever want to, hey, if you ever want to come down in July... Let me know. Hey, I, I used to live in Vegas. The heat out there is, oh, honestly, it's yeah. 120 in Vegas, but I prefer Vegas' 120 over our 90-degree weather here. Yes. Someone else agrees with me. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, the, it's that yeah. the dry heat so much better than this human shit. Oh, my God, man. Like, yeah, I'm sure, I, Jeff, 
I'm sorry, dude, but you got it hard in that heat. I, I already know. The only thing, see, the only thing that, that, that what sucks about Phoenix heat versus when people say, oh, it's a dry heat. Yeah, I get it. But when it's still 110, 115 at 10 o'clock at night, yeah, you know, when crazy. you go outside at three o'clock in the morning and it's a hundred degrees still or hotter sometimes. You know, it just never, ever cools down. You walk so, out at 6 a.m. and it's 100 degrees and you're like, oh, my God, I'm sweating already. Oh, yeah, dude. I yeah. mean, during the middle of summer, you'll be sweating at the warehouse, loading your glass up, you know, at 7 in the morning. Yep. Right. See, I remember I remember when I went to Arizona for the Optium training about a year ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, me and me and my buddy Chase, we were going to go have a beer with you or something. Yeah, and, yeah I remember. Uh, and and I got different... there, dude, and, like, the air difference from there to to hear was like super dope like uh we flew in at like eight o'clock at night but it was only like 75 dude and it felt like paradise i'm like what are these guys talking about you know they're a bunch of liars <laughs> and then like the, i woke up in the morning at like eight o'clock dude and like i had my hoodie on thought it was gonna be like cold dude i take my hoodie off like eight in the morning i was like if you take your hoodie off in oregon at eight in the morning like you were crazy like you're a tweaker. <laughs> hey, you know what? The, you know what's crazy is I I posted in the group that first job I did this morning, and it was all full of dew and had mud and crap all over it, and it was like 45 degrees outside, and I was sweating because I was working so damn hard, hard with just a t-shirt on. I was sweating in 45 degree weather. I was tripping out. And that yeah. see that that's kind of like here. Um, there's some times where it'll rain here but be extremely hot at the same time. Like not only do you have deer sweat coming out of your pores, but like you have, you're getting drenched from the rain. And it's like, you're leaning over the car trying to shoot a bead and you're like, holy fuck, dude, this is not cool. You know, that, that's so, monsoon season here. Yeah. Yeah. Monsoon it, season. Yeah. It sucks, man. But like, there's so many things uh, that you learn working in the rain, especially 80% out of the year. Like, my buddy Chase Spittle, he's in the group, too, and yep. he's uh, working for this guy right now, super cool guy, and um, he lets him install anything on the van, he bought him a brand new Transit, and he put this awning, like, on his van, and it goes out, like, 15 feet, and he got a big old tent, like... Oh, I saw that, yeah, yeah. He's got it all set up, like, he's su super cool with it, so... Uh, I think I want to do that soon, but uh, Jay, I Jay to... Lee he has some cool. Uh, he has a, an yeah. RV one with remote it's control. Yeah, this yeah. is electric. He just yeah, no, comes out. No way. It's not That's a drill. rad. Yeah. Oh, it's not a drill. I thought it was a. I thought he had a remote control one. No, no, it's not a drill. He's got ah. a, He just puts the chuck in the thing and then and then just pulls the trigger and it spins and it just. But yeah, but he has a high roof. He has a high roof yeah. uh, sprinter, yeah. so he'll bring semis underneath his awning. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. He sent us pictures before. Yeah, semis under there, like completely far enough back to like be out of the way of the windshield. Wow, that's yeah. rad. That's yeah. pretty sick. Yeah, see, I, I mean, I got, I keep canopies with me because in the summertime, I mean, if there's no shade, you can't even get your glass prepped. Yep. It gets so been hot. There. I've been so, there. I tried so, to pull it out. <laughs> I tried to pull it out. He's like, no, 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 put that back in. Right. Yeah, well, no, don't look at that out yet. Well, my, my, my thing is with that, too, is, like, how you're talking about the shade. Like, you can't even bring your glass out. Um, you know, that sucks. But, like, here in the rain, like, the glass will get re wet in oh, yeah. seconds. And the the thing is, is my boss makes me use 428. He won't let me use any other glue. And I'm like, dude, I don't really want to use this. But if he's buying it, I can't tell him what to use. And um, – uh, I use Sika all my my whole career, and then I went for him, and that's the first time I ever used anything besides hey, on, Sika. On, on if he only wants to use cheap like 428, switch the sausage and use 838. At least 838 has more body to it. It's a slow drive away time, but with your guys' high humidity, it might be a little quicker. But it has a lot more body than 428, and it's not that much money. Because I use that for two hour drive away time and it's only like ten dollars more yeah well every time i try to tell him something i'm just a stupid young 24 year old kid so. <laughs> uh, one uh, of those guys huh? i've been doing it for 30 years this yeah. way shut the fuck up yeah so years. But, but what i was saying is i just when i go to migrant unless i have to put the molding on the glass um what i do is i just clean the window at migrant slap it in the van I come out, cut out the window, put the tent over the car, and 
you know, pulled out my van and set it. You know, I always once a week I deep clean my van. Like I pull all my tools out, everything out of my van. I deep clean it so that way there's no crud in there really. Um, but I've went back and done some of my other jobs and it, it sticks real good. So that's why I just kind of accepted and move on with using that glue. I just pulled out of my van and the that glue bond. Good. If it's you're doing a, everything right, the glue bond's good. It's just the the uh, will the, stick the, the dog shit. But it's just a safe driveway time. That's the only thing that sucks about it. So yeah, um, he he does get upset at me about that. I tell customers straight up. I said, hey, wait seven hours. I said seriously, wait seven hours. Um, I told my boss that I do that. He's like, dude, why? Just like let them drive their car. And I'm like, dude, you're fucked up, man. Like it literally made me sick uh-huh. to my stomach. I'm like. Fuck, dude. Hey, at least you're doing your part on that. You're telling the customer, you know. Fuck it's... yeah, dude. We need to find out. We need to find out. So we need to find out who the Dow rep is up there and have him pay a visit to that shop. Yeah. <laughs> who is it? I don't know, you guys. <laughs> hey, I as much as I don't like the dude, I'm not going to knock him out. I'm not that type of guy. You know oh, no, I mean? you don't have to say a word. I can figure it out. Don't, you don't have to say a word. <laughs> All right, so... We're gonna switch it up a little bit. We got a couple questions before we end this here. Um, so first thing, I don't know who wants to go first. Um, favorite favorite Christmas dinner dish. Oh, easy, bro. My mom's tater tot casserole. Oh, tater tot my mom, casserole. My mom makes a tater tot casserole, but no one else in my family likes it. So I'm <laughs> like. I'm like, I get the shit in the stick because I never get it anymore. So, <laughs> but she said she will give me the recipe before she dies. So, <laughs> sounds bomb. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, guys, I'm plugging in this charger here. Hey, 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 any anything with cheese and potatoes, it sounds good. So, right. So I, I'm gonna have to say, I'm gonna have to say Cynthia's tamales. Ooh. Man. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I, I got 27 years of them tamales in my life. And, <laughs> ooh, yeah, you got it made in the shade with her, man. <laughs> ooh. Hey, you know what? I got fat because I married a, a good Mexican cook. So that, that's what that's what got me fat. So, um, yeah, Cynthia's tamales. So, in fact, that's what we're, they're doing behind that door right there. Oh, they're making the tamales right they're, now? They're, they're working on tamales right on the other side of that door. So. Where's right. your uh, Where's your wife from? Uh, from Mexico, from the, from Sonora, North Mexico. Okay, my my two best friends, him and his fiance, uh, he's from Honduras, and then okay. she's from she's from Yucatan. So, two okay. different sides of cultures. So. Oh uh, yeah, and Yucatan, Mexico is way different culture than from where my wife's from oh, too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, you ever been down there? I have not yet, but they they did make a promise to take me next year. Go to, so. go to Cancun. Go to Cancun. I've been to Cancun. Can- I, I've been there. Been to Belize. It's very very beautiful. So what about you, Chris? I know you're the culinary king. What's what's your? Uh... <laughs> Man, uh, I'm going. I'm I'm making my. I'm having my mom make thanks uh, Thanksgiving stuffing again because the the stuffing I love. I can't get enough of the stuffing. So right. stuffing on Christmas. So yeah. okay, now on the Christmas thing. Uh, I grew up where you went to bed, no presents under the tree, you wake up, boom, Santa Claus came. That's that's how it was in my house. And then I get with Cynthia's family, and they're the type of family that stays up on Christmas Eve till midnight, and then lets all of the kids have presents and do whatever, and stay up till two or three in the morning and do whatever. So what do you guys do? Uh so what the way i was raised um we get to every christmas eve we get to open up one present and that's it and then christmas morning comes we wake up and then you know we handle our stuff do whatever we got to do but christmas eve we got one present any present we wanted but if we got the wrong present we weren't allowed to open it because if we picked the main present then we couldn't open it so that's why I was raised. So I would always pick the littlest box and get to open it. Okay. You know? So that, that's the way we were raised. But yeah. Yeah. You, I, I was a little similar to that. We uh, it just kind of depended on. Uh, I've always had split families and everything. So I was. Uh, depends who we were at. But yeah, I was you know open something small on Christmas Eve, and then 
yeah, you go to bed and Santa puts everything under the tree. That's how I've done it with my son for, you know, nine years now. And every time he goes to bed, me and my wife sit there and wrap every single thing because we waited until the last minute. And then, <laughs> boom, Santa came, baby. Yeah, like, I mean, the way, like, that movie Christmas Story. Yep. That's exactly how it was when I was a kid. <gasps> oh, Santa like, came. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, you sit on the couch. Now we got the iPhone, so just pop your iPhone out, do a little video, open the presents, everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, you get your, you uh, Gotta do it for the gram. Gotta get your gram yeah. shot in. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm really grateful this year, though, because um, me and my family, we've been going through some stuff, and uh, I haven't really spent uh, Christmas, like, as a kid, you know, since I was, like, 18. And as soon as I turned 18, it was, like, gone, like, that Christmas spirit. But this year, my mom's like, all right, we're cracking down. All of you guys, we're having a good fucking Christmas, and so I'm super excited this year. You got, you know? you got a lot of nieces and nephews being the youngest? Um, n- no, my mom has a sister. Uh, my, my dad only had a brother, which was my uncle, but he passed away. But anyways, I have two uh, two cousins. No, I'm talking about your, I, your older siblings. Do they have kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I have all, actually, yeah, all my brothers but one. So three of my brothers have kids, so. I'm an uncle twice. And you try to be the Funkel. The Funkel, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got two nieces, two nephews. That's to cool. answer your question. So it's super fun. And of course, my mom, you know, she just splurging on them. Splurging, splurging. She don't care about us anymore. She said, screw the boys. I'm get, I'm getting my grandkids everything. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. We got a, I got a, my, my grandparents, they, they do that now. And, uh, I came home after work one day. I got a fucking full basketball hoop sitting on the front porch. The next day, nice. I'm all in. I'm like, holy crap. Now there's a bike come in. I'm like, bro, man, I didn't get that when I was a kid. What the hell? <laughs> right. See, that all goes back to um, being your own boss, man. You're able to enjoy those little things like that, you know? And, yeah. you know, it, regardless if it's easy or hard for you, at least you're still able to do that. You don't have to answer to someone every day. You know what I mean? Totally. So that's. That, you that's work cool. as much as you want and work as little as you want. And right. I always tell people, I didn't go to work for myself hard. to work hard. Yeah. Right. So, that's right. Um, Dude, that's awesome. So uh, one last question. What do you do for fun? You, uh, I know you, you got, you're you got the drift guy. Before you guys go on your little drift, little circle jerk conversation, do you do anything else? Being up there, <laughs> fish, hunt, anything like that? Um, unfortunately, I have way too many expensive hobbies another <laughs> so i'm really into uh you know drifting obviously i'm into guns i, I love shooting i love too. fishing i love doing all that you know fun fun stupid stuff outside like i like being outside dude uh, but one thing i've been doing a lot lately because covid i've been playing a shitload of video games man and it, it, it's a good way to pass time you know I, I like to go to work come home spend time with my girlfriend and play some video games or do whatever and um yeah that's pretty much it Right on. Yeah, that's cool. Sound sound like my son-in-law. My son-in-law is saying works, come home, and play video games with my daughter. So yeah, <laughs> well, that's it. Well, that that's my that's that's my my outlet to not spend money. Go out and buy tires and buy new fishing poles and buy guns and go waste my money because I'm trying to save up. So I just come home, play my Xbox that I've owned for two years, and you know save money and stay home so well, i had to i had to get out of the gun group even though i was winning guns in the in, in the raffles i was spending too spending too much <laughs> damn money i just had to get out of the damn group right yep. i mean you know the saying always goes can never have too many guns but i need more right now so <laughs> oh, i need more ammo i got plenty of guns i just yeah. damn ammo <laughs> yeah so what, what do you what do you guys that's another question i see brought up in the group a lot that's kind of cool to talk about uh, you guys everyday carry in your vans or I do. I mean Arizona is a open carry. You can actually conceal carry legally in Arizona without a CCW. Oh right. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I carry. I carry a little a uh, little Walder PSS with me every day. Um, I got okay. some other bigger hand cannons, but I mean, I got it's single stack ten. I got another ten with me. If if I get into a battle any more than that, then we got bigger problems. Yeah, you got bigger problems than what's going on right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, like, that's kind of the, the the train I'm trying to get my girlfriend to go on because she's getting into guns a little bit, too. And I want to get her just, like, a little Taurus, a G2C, yeah. the double stack nine, 14 mm-hmm. rounds, like, and a little three-inch barrel. Like, that's badass. You know what's actually a really good gun for a girl who's a beginner shooter? 
and I, honestly, it's I want to get one as a carry just because they're kind of cool. Is you get those Walder uh, P22s, and they're like 17 rounds. 22s are always available, and that gun's loud as shit. I mean, it sounds like you're shooting a hand pop. cannon. Yeah, it's like a pop. Yeah, it's a big, big. It sounds bigger than it is. My my wife has a Hellcat. That's her carry. Yeah. Little double stack nine. Yeah, Chris. The in the in the. That one. Yeah, that one. Oh no way! Okay, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Cynthia's gun now. So. All right. That was yeah. cool. That's rad. Um, me personally, I I don't carry compact. I, I can't. I hate them. I don't like shooting them. I don't like carrying them. I carry a full size. I I carry an SD9 VE. Okay. Um, Smith and Wesson nine. You know, it's got 17 rounds, 16 in the mag, one in the pipe. But, I mean, I that thing feels comfortable. But like when I'm working on cars, I keep it out of my waist. I throw it in my van door, shut my door, lock my door, and do the job. You know. Um. But yeah, we we've had a few scary situations out here. You know, uh, Oregon's not really ghetto. It's just like Tweakerville. And you get a lot of crazy guys. Like the guy with the Camaro, he came out like wanting yeah. to swing on me, this and that. I'm like, dude, get out of my face. Like, get out of here. Like, I don't need this shit, you know? And um, it just goes to show it don't matter where you are, or who you are, or what you're doing, situation can happen any second of your life. Oh, you know? Yeah. yeah. All, always pack, man. <laughs> well, I got that where I posted about that caterpillar. Um, the foreman at the yard's like, you know, you can come anytime after 2 p.m., the equipment will be down, or whatever. And he's, oh, I don't care how late you come, you know, but if you do come at night, make sure you're packing because we've had some incidents out here. So, you know, and that's out in the middle of nowhere. That's remember, Chris, when you were here, when we were Jason, we were trying to film that video and we yeah. went first, we went way south. Yes. I'm like farther south than that. Oh, way wow. out in the stick. Nothing the, out there. Yeah. And the guy's like, yeah, we've had some situations out here. So who knows? Hey, at least he's honest. Yeah. He left you out there like a <laughs> you know you asshole, you yeah. out there, you know getting all jumped and shit <laughs> eight o'clock at night <laughs> said he well they have these giant it's it's like a mine they 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 manufacture asphalt but it's like a mine setup almost now these giant giant uh 400 volt generators and they have like 10 of them and they run 24 7 and they caught some tweakers trying to steal the wire out of it why it was the running <laughs> why it was running yeah. What the hell? Yeah, the guy's like, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't, if I could have been all right with the, with, with the generator being shut down, I would have let him fry himself. <laughs> but I can't have the generator get shut down. So he said he went yeah, out there with the gun. Hell no. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. Oh, you whatever. You packing or what? You like that kind of stuff? I do, I do like it, but I'm in a uh, SF Bay Area, California. Yeah, that's right. And uh, California. California, there is no packing, oh, nothing. You, you, your shit is locked up, nice and tight. Yeah, and Baron, Baron Von Gavin won't let you have a gun. Yeah, when when the robbers come in, you gotta tell them to hold on a minute. I gotta go grab my shit, and I need you to hold yours and point it at me so I can actually shoot you. But maybe even shoot at me first, and then I can. And then you. wait, a minute, hold on, I gotta unlock my gun after you shoot yeah, at yeah, me. Yeah, I gotta take the gun lock off first, and the lock on the case, like you know, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Dude, just get a potato gun and put a whole bunch of lawn knife blades in there, dude. You'll be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> like some, straight, some straight Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Bludgeon. <Yeah. laughs> Start a cannon. Just have a cannon at your front door. Oh my god. That'd be rad, dude. Just see the glass guy shooting razor blades out of a potato gun. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That would be insane. I'd rather get shot by a real gun at that point. It's like, just let it happen. <laughs> right, right, right. Holy uh, hell. Oh, yeah. Well, all right, Cody. It was nice talking to you, man. I appreciate your time. Um, appreciate you, uh, you being one of the young guys who wants to learn. Yeah. There's a lot of young guys who don't give a fuck. So. Have that integrity. Keep that integrity. Keep yep. doing it the right way. Definitely. Cool. Thanks yep. for letting me vent to you guys, man. I feel like I complain most of the time instead of, you know, <laughs>, laughs and smiles. No, it's all good, man. It's all good. Stay and stay away from those uh, Volkswagen door glasses. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> I never quit on a job. I never quit on a job, but that was when I quit on. Dude, the whole, the whole side was crashed and, like, all messed up. Like, I'm not pulling the frame out of this old dented door. I'm like, I'm not marrying the car. 
yeah. no thanks i'm out the yeah. customer is cool he's like okay see you later <laughs> i'm like just buy a new door you need a new one anyway <laughs> comes with the glass and everything yeah <laughs> there you go just switch the harness over you'll be all right yeah yeah, yeah. all right, right on, guys all, all right, right guys. talk to you later have buddy yeah have a good night guys see ya. Later.